those of you who don't know me, I'm Malia Nobrico Oliveira, and I'm joining in from my Onehanao here in Hanapepe, Kauai. And as a part of Hawaii Nui Akea, it's been really exciting to bring, I don't know, I gotta go check again. Today is either the 59th episode or the 60th episode since we got started. And so that's really exciting. Um, and, you know, I don't know if people really realize we would go on this long, um, but it's been exciting to connect with so many people and to really, um, yeah, bring awesome cultural content to, to all of you. So I'm going to ask to unmute my friends here and ask them to do a quick ko'olauna of themselves and then we'll get started. Aloha e noi me imai. Aloha. Aloha kako. Mahalo Malia for having us. Um, oa o noi lani, good year kaopua no kalihi a me eia o ahu me yao. I don't know. What should we say? <laughs> what did... That's perfect. That's perfect. Is that Kuko enough? Olauna, okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> sure, we're going to learn more about you guys as we talk about Laho Iho Ea too. Ano ai kia loa kako e na hoa makamaka. Mai kaiki a kaiki. O wau o i mai Winchester. No wai pio o ahu mai. He keiki he mamo a kaku he awa. Ano no kako. Uh, my name is Imai Winchester. Hello, everybody uh, around the world. Um, thanks for tuning in. Mahalo, Malia, for having us today, this morning, uh, to talk about Kalaho Iho Ea um, and the exciting work going on, uh, not just around the Paiaina, but all around the world in celebration of the reestablishment of the consciousness of our nationality. So, Mahalo for having us here today. Awesome. So, uh, I, I see more people jumping on and they're continuing to introduce themselves mm. from like, South Carolina and all over, but maybe let's get our, shall we um, start up our slides and, or however you guys want to holomua. We're excited to learn. Uh, hello. Um, Imai is going to kind of start off with the history of uh, La Hoi Hoi. Uh, Imai, did you want the slides now or? Um, sure. Yeah. Give them, uh, give everybody something to look at besides myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello everybody. Um, so we get started. Mahalo again uh, for tuning in. Um, today we're going to be talking about Kalaho Iho Iea, uh, which is a very dangerous holiday uh, for Amelika, uh, for imperial powers of the world. Uh, because this day, as many of us Kanaka who have been educated, um, who have had um, the privilege to understand our history um, differently than the generations before, understand uh, about our independence, our kuokoa. And if you know about Kuoko, then you should surely know about Laho Iho Ea. Um, and today we're here to talk about Ea um, and this, this idea, um, and maybe try to tie it into some of the things that we're witnessing, some of the phenomena around the planet um, in terms of uh, unifications of people, oppressed peoples around the world. Um, so today is going to be a little bit of a, I guess, a blast to the past. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, the monarchy just for a little bit, just kind of give us a little bit of uh, um, context to what we're kind of talking about when we talk about La Hoi Hoi Ea. Uh, on the screen, you're going to see two very handsome gentlemen. Um, the, uh, the one on the, the lower right hand, uh, many of you will recognize his face, um, Dr. Kikuni Blaisdell, um, who is a proud uh, patriot, a legend, uh, one of the patriarchs of the Hawaiian movement, um, certainly the patriarch of the contemporary celebration of Kalaho Hoi Hoi Ea. Um, now let's take a uh, travel back down to 1843, uh, over 170 years ago. Um, now we're talking about an important ruler. Um, we know his father. His father's a pretty famous guy. He went by the name of Kamehameha Kahi, uh, Kanae Puni, the conqueror. Um, and his two high-ranking sons, Liho Liho, um, would bear the weight of ha having to lead a nation, um, sort of made complicated by foreign... Um, invasion. Um, and so what his two sons needed to now try to do is how do you best sort of uh, navigate these new waters. Uh, Kamehameha Ekole, some of us understand, came to the throne um, as a very young boy. Uh, we know that Ka'ahumanu reigned as Kuhina Nui. 
Uh, we know that he worked with Kikaulu Ohi Kikuina Nui Elua when Scott Humanu passed away. Um, and this was a pretty interesting guy. Um, and I'm a teacher by trade um, sometimes. Um, and I try to tell my students that um, of all the Kamehamehas you need to know, you got to know about this guy. Kamehameha Ekolu, Kaui Keoli. Um, placed in the, the dark clouds, you know. Um, because this guy uh, was raised in both sort of the Kahiko fashion as well as having to change and adapt and adjust. Um, and reflects to new circumstances that he was going to face as a uh, as a young ruler. Um, now, uh, in right around the 1840s, uh, Hawaii had already been introduced to a bunch of uh, imperial sort of I'm just going to say threats. Um, their presence, at least in Hawaii, um, sort of stemmed the tide of a growing interest, and in, I guess in Hawaii as a uh, as a as a region. Um, now. In this time, Kaui Keoli Kamehame Ekolu went through some very major changes. Um, he gave up his authority as Akua on uh, on the land, and he invested into this new and contemporary um, constitutional monarchy, which we all kind of know about. Um, but that's something important for everybody to understand, that he gave up his status as an Akua living uh, on this earth to give power um, to his people, which he was trying desperately to protect. Um, in the 1840s, as some of us know, um, he sends three delegates around the world uh, um, to obtain um, a very important uh, treaties uh, from Amilika, from Palani, uh, and from Beretania, from America, Britain, and France. Um, and those, uh, Elele Lahui, um, Timoteo, Simpson, and Richards, um, would embark on a month, you know, months and months long uh, journey around the world. Now, during that time in 1843, this is where the star starts. Um, several nations had already um, showed interest in Hawaii. So, um, under uh, British uh, consul, uh, Lord Richard Charlton, uh, Richard Charlton, I should say, who uh, was working as an embassy for uh, Britain, had, had some land here that he was gift given by the government um, as part of his position. So. Um, when his time was up, um, he had demanded that the land be given to him um, as a part of his compensation for his work or something. Um, Kaui Keoli, in a long story, said no. Um, and in typical gunboat di uh, diplomacy, um, Richard Charlton calls, uh, writes a letter to his friend. Um, and some of you guys know about how the overthrow took place in 1893 with the Americans. Some of this is going to sound familiar to you, but uh, life and property of British subjects were being threatened and all these things needed to happen. So a guy parks his bun gunboat out of Honolulu Harbor and threatens the king. Um, he in fact makes 10 demands um, to the king. Um, the king sort of understanding the complexity of the time um, temporarily cedes uh, his authority. Uh, and for six months, um, in what was called the uh, Paulette Affair, um, during this time, Lord George Paulette, uh, what is he, captain of the Karis uh, Fort, um, goes around the kingdom uh, as it said, um, takes on all the Hawaiian flags and raises the Union Jack. And for six months, this is the occupation of Britain, of Britain over Hawaii. Um, having received word, um, Queen Victoria, um, a, a few months later, uh, immediately sends over uh, Paulette's superior officer, a man by the name of Admiral Richard Thomas. Uh, Admiral Richard Thomas responds directly to the Queen's orders, comes to Hawaii um, as quickly as he can, um, interviews the king, has audience with him, understands what's happened, and he rectifies the wrong. Um, and so in an official ceremony held at what was then sort of the outpost of Honolulu, um, a flag that, um, a Union Jack uh, flag uh, was ceremonially lowered. Um, and you can see the park right here now. Um, and the Hawaiian flag uh, was returned, um, Pukia'ila, uh, was returned to its rightful place. And for us Olelo Hawaii people, we know that Ho'i Ho'i means to return uh, something to where it belongs. Um, and so when we talk about ho'i ho'i ea, um, the sovereignty that um, our people have, and it can be translated in many ways, uh, but the national sovereignty um, specifically that we talk about um, when we have a discussion about ea um, is very critical to this time period. Uh, we know the famous saying, ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. It's in songs, it's in messages, the state has openly appropriated and sold it back to us. Um, but what many of us do not understand um, is that through the colonial process, uh, a lot of our history, as uh, Fanon says, becomes distorted, disfigured, and destroyed. Um, and much of the same can be applied to the Hawaiian occupation or colonization, depending on how you want to frame it. 
Um, nonetheless, this cultural bomb, this destruction of our identity also included not just language, not just hula, not just gods, but it also included the destruction of our national awareness, our national consciousness. So um, in July 31st, 1843, at that ceremony, um, Thomas, uh, Admiral Richard Thomas returns ea, ho'i ho'i ea, uh, to Kaui Keoli in this ceremony at what is now named Thomas Square. Um, so um, what is special about this park um, is that it's the first public park um, decreed by Kamehameha Ekolu. I mean, it's given the name Admiral uh, Richard Thomas Square to honor um, the righteous deed uh, that was bestowed upon the kingdom of Hawaii. It was a stamp, um, not just a, a nice model to, uh, you know, sell to tourists. Um, so that day, um, we also know that from the park, um, Kawi Keoli takes his procession at Kauai Ha'o Church, and this is famous. He, he, he proclaims, he thunders out to the audience, you know, um, the sovereignty of, of this kingdom um, has been preserved um, through right action. Um, um, so as we reclaim, as we sort of distort or re, uh, reconceptualize our history, it's very important for us to understand the things that maybe we take for granted, um, the things that are right in front of us that maybe we've never known about. When I was a young boy, um, Thomas Square, uh, was not a national park. Uh, maybe for many of us growing up in, in Oahu, Thomas Square was not a symbol of Hawaii. But here's, if you can take a look at it, uh, many of you guys will also notice that um, this aerial view of Thomas Square also looks very similar to the Union Jack. Mm. Um, and that was done purposefully um, in order to honor, again, Britain. Um, if you look to the Mauka side, I guess it's the right-hand side of the screen, I believe. Um, yes, that will be Beretania. Um, and for us, Olala Hawaii guys, then we know that Beretania is the Hawaiian word for Britain. Um, also adjacent to that, uh, to that park um, is that sort of shorter one, sort of on the lower end of the screen of the park, um, which is called Victoria. Um, Victoria is in Queen Victoria, Her Majesty, um, who also sent Admiral Richard Thomas to Hawaii to rectify this wrong Ho'i Ho'i Ea. Um, so today, as we build our consciousness around um, our own independence as a people, we look to Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea um, as, a, uh, as evidence, um, of evidence of what can be done, um, as evidence of the power of belief um, and righteousness. Um, but it's evidence that uh, we are still here. Um, and the contemporary celebration of Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea uh, represents justice, represents um, overcoming that justice, and represents a clear message to the United States of America um, that just as Hawaii was returned in 1843, July 31st, in that ceremony, um, we also demand um, that our air, our life, that you remove the knee from our neck. Uh, we remove the colonial practice uh, of extermination, of imperialism, that is practiced on a wide scale throughout the world and here in Hawaii as well too. Um, and we rise, uh, like peoples of the world rise as well. And we demand our humanity. Uh, we demand uh, our history, we demand our justice. So Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea is a celebration of Ea. It's a celebration of justice. It's a celebration of what more we have to do. Um, and we demand likewise uh, that the United States exercise the same uh, pono uh, that was given to us uh, back in 1843. Um, and when it does, and it will, it will happen. Um, party's going to be at Thomas Square, everybody. We invite you guys to come down. Awesome. You know, mahalo for sharing this um, aerial view too. I've never seen it from this perspective. And as soon as um, you popped it up, I, I could see it too. So yeah, amazing. And then just Again, it's part of that whole relearning of our mo'olelo. And I like some of the, um, so many of our friends on Facebook are using hashtags like education, get educated, you know, and these awesome like hashtags. So mahalo to everyone that's, um, you know, just doing that kind of work and bringing that into our communities. So awesome. I, I, I'll just say, you know, because I know Noi is going to talk about our kupuna honorees. Um, I want to mention also Kekuni Blaisdell again for raising that consciousness in us, you know, for breathing life back into our kino as a lahui. Um, him as well as many other um, that we cannot name here that are not pictured on our, on our, um, on our graphics here. Uh, but for those of you who are watching or paying attention, your kupunas were the one who got us here. Um, so we have a lot of um, 
responsibility, you know, like Kuleana, yeah, Ea's in there too. Um, and it's an important, uh, it's an important calling for us as a people, not just here in Hawaii, but around the world, you know, people who are not Kanaka, people who believe in justice, who believe in uh, solidarity and liberation, you know, this is our liberation day, you know, this is why throughout the month of July, uh, we are beginning to reclaim Independence Month um, here in Hawaii. Um, and we're going to, you know, redirect um, our people's attention, redirect everybody's attention to true independence and what, um, you know, justice and freedom is for our people. Um, thank Mahalo. You, you know, I, 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 just to try it out real quick, um, you know, many of us on social media saw what happened in Kailua town, yeah, on uh, last week. And yeah, I know it stirred a lot. I mean, you know, what a community because uh, Kailua, many of the people in Kailua don't think that there are Hawaiians still living in, in Kailua when really we know it's so different. And there's so many of our friends that still occupy space there and live there and have generations of Ohana there. I don't know, you guys have any mana'o on like what happened there, uh, kind of as it relates to La Hoi Hoi Ea? Uh, I want to give space for my, uh, for Noi to speak too, but I'll, I'll just read this out. Uh, um, like I said, this is a dangerous holiday. Our consciousness is very dangerous. Uh, Malcolm X said, you know, you don't know how people respond to the truth. Um, and, and for us as a people, it's incredibly important to be brave and courageous like those guys out there in Kailua were, or to stand, you know, um, in the face of threat, you know, and, and and people who live in areas that are militarized, you understand that threat, you know, like, um, and these are guys who are going around that are trained by the most powerful military in the world to take people out, you know, but we must remain true and we must remain firm and only pa, you know, to who we are. And that's the way through education, through celebration, through dialogue. And I saw a lot of good peaceful dialogue, you know, and that's what we also, you know, also face is, you know, this angry Hawaiian perception, um, but, you know, educational programs like this, what we're trying to do at Kalaho Iho Ea, you know, like all of our partners are around Kanai Okana, um, you know, we're trying to provide spaces of access. And I think Hawaiians have a lot of reason to be angry. You know, 170 years to be, you know, 120 something years of anger pent up. Um, but part of that process is how do you diverge? How do you convert that anger into positive energy? And I think that a lot of our movements together are really seeing the power that we have when, when we, we make those determinations for ourselves and that's what a is our, our rule our self-determination based off of our own principles and our own values but to uh, all the kanakas out there in kailua holding it down uh we know who you guys are we see you guys but we stand with you guys mm -hmm. yeah um Oh, about when, um, about last week, mahalo, I, I was just wrapped listening. It's, you know, it's nice getting to uh, listen to Imai in this way, because normally, like, when we're, you know, we're at home, we're talking about, like, what are the kids going to be doing today? What are we going to eat for dinner? Or that kind of stuff. So it's just awesome to be able to listen. I wish I was a student in his classes sometimes. <laughs> um, but I was thinking, you know, about Kailua, what happened that, um, it was really awesome to see the response of so many Kanaka because I was thinking back to my, you know, childhood. So I grew up um, primarily in Heia, but I also had um, spent a lot of time in Kalihi where my uh, popo and my tutu both were born and grew up and then in Kahalu'u. So Kailua was kind of like one of those places when we, we drive over to go to the beach and, you know, it's different kind of feel, Kailua and Heia Kaneohe. Um, but I could imagine when I was growing up, if this had happened, nobody would have taken the flags down. And so it was really cool, I think, to see this moment where, you know, Kanaka were um, willing to make that kind of a, a public uh, statement. And then I thought it was also really interesting how this, this guy, you know, we all saw that um, social media video going viral. I think it was from uh, Mikey, um, you know, I, that, you know, of this guy pulling um, the ahu apart or what, what the structure that had been built. Um, 
and him kind of saying like he had no idea and i think that this is one of the things about la hoi hoi ea too is you know we are doing this educational work for our community but we're also especially over the last 15 years since imai has taken lead of organizing um trying to reach a really broad audience so that everybody should know yeah everybody should know that when you come here this is what you're um this is the history and contemporary you know present that we're we're dealing with so i thought it was great that these folks from the kailua chamber of commerce were having to confront that reality and and can no longer go ignorant mm. mahalo yeah that's cool i mean i i see a lot of comments coming in on facebook too about just that presence um that they agree yeah there's this strong us marines presence in kailua but still get kanaka holding space there and um yeah and then oh someone also said the parade and fireworks show are long time staples of kailua and the community needs to change that mm-hmm. so i think that's some great things for communities to to think about right i mean I think that was one thing that got canceled for a lot of communities is this 4th of July kind of fireworks, right? And how do we bring fireworks, not the actual item, but you know, bring that fire and that ignition and igniting of spirit and of ea in different communities, I think is another way to reframe it. Exactly. And I I mean, Imai can speak to this more, but um I think it's so important when we say okay we're not going to celebrate Thanksgiving and July 4th and you know all those holidays that were not from our culture um to replace them with something and so with la hoi hoi ea and the celebration of our of our independence of our ea it's a way to say that okay you know maybe you're not celebrating July 4th but you have July 31st and the whole month leading up to it to celebrate yeah, Hawaii. Mm. And we encourage everybody to bomb their fireworks on the 31st. Um, save all the <laughs> illegals. We know what's going on. Um, and, and, you know, part of that, uh, you know, for guys who work in like restoration, you know, like if you work low, you work fish pond, you work stuff for that, you know, in order to reconstruct something, you got to take some things apart. Uh, some things have just rotten out. They've done, you know, they've, they've ran their course. Um, a lot of things need to just be replaced and simplified and, you know, augmented just a little bit. And then you can see that the strength has always still been there. Um, likewise for our La Hui, when I look at the picture of Thomas Square, you know, when I was young, it was like a dog park, a drug park. Mostly you saw powwows if there's anything cultural over there. You know, like I bought, bought my first ukulele from that section, but it was at a powwow, you know, like it wasn't at a Hawaiian event. So I never for a moment uh, associated um, Thomas Square with anything Hawaiian. And it wasn't right. until I met uh, Papa Kekuni um, who's a very important, you know, very important kupuna that it's very important that all young OPO know his name, Kekuni Blaze, though. There he is. Um, in 1986, let me just go into the second wave. Um, because in 1893, after 50 years of celebrating this national holiday along with Lakuoko in the Hawaiian Kingdom, um, the United States, you know, participated in overthrow uh, of the monarchy, as we know, Lili Uokalani. Um, and that's when. Um, this celebration was ended. And it's important for us to understand, like why did Lili Uokalani as queen not just fight for her kingdom, why not just send the guys to war, why not send them to battle, like they would have won, easy. Um, Part of the reason that we need to understand the complexity of the situation is that Lili Uokalani, a firm believer and a firm student in history, has also been celebrating, like there's newspapers about her and her brothers celebrating Kalaho Iho Ea with the future rulers of Hawaii. So this is a part of their political philosophy, their consciousness, their ideologies understand that ho'i ho'i ea is a real thing, right? right? But when we talk about restoration from Hawaiian kingdom in today, it's like, no, well, if it wasn't them, it would have been Japan, right? Which is um, part of the dismantling that we need to do, you know, like part of that ideology is why the Kalo cannot see the light is because there's so much of this false narrative that's built on top of this complex system of life that we have here and it just doesn't just doesn't jive anymore so it's got to go like lb just got to go um and those things i think suck and sap i think a lot of the strength in air and mana you know from our people and and make 
um, make futures look impossible. You know, like the future of Hawaiian Kingdom makes it look impossible. All they can think about is the same tropes being force fed to us by, um, you know, missionaries by racists that you live in grass huts and wear coconut bras and all kinds of stupid shit like that. Sorry. But um, it, it is an important moment for us in the reawakening of our people, you know, and that's what Kekuni means is, you know, like to diagnose um, this heva through this ceremony. And, and when Kekuni in 1986, along with Papa Soli, another honorary, uh, Kihei uh, Soli Niheu, uh, many of us guys remember Papa Soli, um, when they brought this, um, this event, um, this reclamation project back together in 1986, 1986, 1986, um, a small group of Hawaiian patriots still loyal, still wanting to understand, still wanting to make connections, not knowing all of the answers. And I've spent time, you know, trying to listen as best as I could um, to a lot of these kupuna. Um, didn't base it, base it off of strictly research. It was off of na'au, it was off of gut, it was off of feeling, makahana ka'ike. You know, and, and that's what my, I, I think I took away from them is that if we're going to do anything, we got to do something. Um, and we mm. reflect, we refine. You know, it, it, it's fine to mess up. You know, as an educator, we tell our students, it's fine to mess up, but not trying, ah, you know. Um, that's, where, that's where the failure happens, you know. Uh, failing to try is, is in itself what it is, you know. So um, I was inspired when, when I had a chance to go to university after, um, to the university around the 2000s, and I was able to meet Kekuni. Um, and be, you know, welcomed into Hale uh, Ohinani, like a lot of us may be listening, you know, were uh, at the Nu'uanu house where rebel headquarters where guys from all over the world would stay and talk story till, you know, like past midnight, share poo poo, may I, um, we would plan, we would reflect, we would introduce, introduction to itself took like hour and a half, two hours, you know, uh, but Kekuni um, really believed in archiving the Mo'olelo, the Mo'okuaha of everybody. And if you've ever been to his house, you would understand what I mean. And everybody who knows Kekuni knows that nobody leaves before you take a picture. Oh, um, <laughs> and so I think yeah. Kekuni would look maybe at a, at a shirt maybe this year and be very happy at the company that he's keeping over there. And our intention is to really build and to honor our kupuna, you know, um, every year. Um, this year was a little bit difficult because of the COVID normalcy. Um, we really want to provide the space and a time for like our, our honorees, our kupunas to be met face to face and in a crowd. So because the virtual thing, which it is right now, uh, we sort of taken a pause and, and try to just reflect on all of the kupuna who have done their job so far. Um, and then when we return back to um, the sites and, and what we were used to, um, then we'll continue on. But um, I think it's important for us just to kind of recognize um, that after, geez, like, you know, nearly a century of being buried under American occupation, Americanization, denationalization, um, all of these efforts to extinguish our people, um, it took a few brave, and again, Kekuni didn't turn to the Hawaiian kingdom till about he was 60, you know, like, he had lived maybe two or three lives until um, he had found his aloha in a patriotism. So for those of you guys who are just jumping on board, eh, hey, our, our strongest warriors, you know, have taken all different paths, you know, and, and for those of us who have been born in the, uh, born in the movement and have been handed Olelo Hawaii and through programs um, with, you know, with great uh, kuleana, uh, with, with great mana comes great kuleana, you know, um, and so we expect plenty, and I said, I tell my students, yeah, you guys get all this stuff now, I'm going to see what you're doing with them. Mm. Um, and I think that's an important accountability sake, and that's why I think every single month, like, what would, what would Kekuni think, you know, if, if this would make him smile, then to me, we're doing something good. Um, if I can see Papa Kihei smiling, okay, we did something good, you know. And they come to us in the rain, they come to us in the wind, they come to us in, in, the, in, in the manu and hoi lona of all different shapes and forms. Um, and, you know, we try to be reflexive. We're not perfect, for sure. We made mistakes, but we try our best to work with our community as, uh, and with the capacity that we have. And again, Noi and I are full-time teachers. And, you know, uh, I'm very grateful for her and all of the, you know, awesome people that I've had a chance to, you know, co-organize with over the years, um, you know, who have now have families, who have now have, like, doctorates, who now have, you know, all, all, all these, like, great community initiatives that they're, they're fronting. Um, and, I, and I'm glad that, you know, in my growth, in my development as a Kanaka, you know, it's been very, um, very, benef very beneficial for me um, to air, to grow as well. 
you know, with our people. So uh, I just wanted to, to say that. Just a quick um, response about Kikuni. I mean, you know, our generation has been so blessed to be able to spend that time that we were able to with Kikuni. And I was just, um, we're editing uh, a book uh, around Native Hawaiian place of learning at Manoa. And I was, um, we're, so we're going through that process now. And the, the chapter that I was reading was submitted by Kumakaku Okalani and um, it brought up Kekuni's name and the important role that Kukuni, Kekuni played at the University of Hawaii and finding spaces and creating spaces um, like the Center for Hawaiian Studies before there was an uh, actual space. You know, Kekuni was so instrumental is what I got out of that piece yesterday um, to find these spaces and create spaces on the Manoa campus for Hawaiians and for Hawaiian studies and to really bring that to fruition to what it is today. So yeah, that's kind of what's been on my mind about Kikuni and just so thankful for that. Mahalo. Uh, Kikuni was, I mean, we, like you said, we're so blessed to have been able to spend time with him and to be mentored by him. And, you know, looking at like the life that he lived, he, um, so my family first encountered him because he's a hematologist, right? He was a specialist physician who actually um, treated my uncle who had sickle cell anemia mm. uh, and various other kinds of uh, issues. But, you know, because Kekuni specialized in blood disorders, that was how we came to meet him. And even in the hospitals and from the earliest times, you know, he would always, if he knew he was treating a Hawaiian family, Olelo Hawaii, like even if the family didn't have the, the language, just even the basics and having the opportunity to encounter that in a medical setting in those decades and even today, I think is pretty unique. And he was creating, so he was always creating space, just affirming what you were saying, you know, he was always mm -hmm. creating space. And um, I think all of us who knew him and got the privilege of being able to spend face-to-face -face time with him. I also remember the ways he would honey you and, you know, just hold your, hold your face or, or your yeah. shoulders and just really affirm, like, you know, how much he, how much aloha he had for every single person. Um, and at the same time was just so fierce about our independence and about ending U.S. occupation, about challenging U.S. empire and Part of that came from his experience in um, treating folks who had been through um, nuclear warfare in Japan. So in his earlier life, you know, he was um, a physician who worked in the um, aftermath of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. And through that experience of seeing the impacts of war, um, I think that was part of what drove him to so um, strongly oppose U.S. empire in Hawaii and outside of Hawaii as well, you know, in, in, in all the ways that the tentacles of U.S. empire have reached various lands. Um, and his um, staunchness and his, like, just intense aloha for individuals were, were the same, yeah? Like, you might said um, sometimes people think about this anger as like and and how to channel it into the positive his um, that aloha aina is such a is such a beautiful way to describe it because all of those things were um, integrated I think for him and he always really credited a few people with politicizing and radicalizing him and bringing him into the Hawaiian movement and so Papa Kihei Solinihew, who's with him um, here as one of the first honorees that when we started doing um, Kupuna honorees was one of those people that he mm. um, really credited as, you know, this is a person who has been in the movement for longer than I have, who has brought me um, to where I am today. And so um, Imai took over leading La Hoi Hoi e about 15 years ago. Um, and one of the innovations that, that he and others introduced uh, was to choose Kupuna Honorary every, every year. So since 2013, we have been um, choosing two Kupuna, one who is still present with us in the flesh and one who is, you know, 
um, has gone on to the be with our alma kua, but um, you know whose legacy still lives with us. And so they were they were the first. Um, if it's okay, I'll just kind of briefly share who we've honored up to sure. this. Sure. Um, so let's see. I hope you can see the slides. I'm not sure what what happened with that one, but um. In 2014, uh, can you see this, this, the image? It says loading. Loading, okay. Well, hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll, it'll load up. I'll just keep talking as we, as we, um, so the, in 2014, we honored two Wahine, Auntie Terry Kekoolani uh, Raymond, who uh, was one of those first people too, who was a very regular at um, Uncle Kikuni's Hale Kaohinani um gatherings and who's been a demilitarization and sovereignty um activist for decades so auntie terry and then um auntie peggy hao ross and you know i think a lot of people don't know and and even me i i've had to learn a lot more about auntie peggy hao ross she was with an organization called ohana hawaii but even in the 1970s, I was looking through um, the 1979 testimonies on the native hawaiian education act and in 1979, Auntie Peggy Ha'o Ross was talking about um, the real importance of education um, for Hawaiians, by Hawaiians. Um, she was, I'm just going to see if I can pull it up in a different way here. Um, she actually, in the test, in the um, hearings for the Native Hawaiian Education Act, presented a draft treaty between, so not a historical treaty, but a draft treaty of what a reconfigured relationship between an independent United uh, States and an independent Hawaii could look like, country to country, in 1979. And so I think you know, when we think today about. Um, the kinds of conversations our people are having about Hawaiian um, nationality and U.S. occupation and Hawaiian independence, we really have to go back to those kupuna who were the brave ones to be called like crazy. You know, people thought that Hawaiian independence advocates in the um, late 1970s, in the mid 80s, when Uncle Kikuni folks started doing la hoi hoi ea, they really thought they were crazy, and so. You know, now today we have the privilege of being able to say, no, we're not crazy. We have, you know, decades worth of research now to show that these are the facts. Um, but it's so important for us to recognize those brave ones who um, blaze the trail for us, you know, who laid the foundation so that we can be where we are today. Um, so let's see. So the, the next year, 2015, we honored um, two uncles who were part of the um, Kaho'olawe movement, Kawai Puna Prejean and, um, and Walter Riddy, Uncle Walter and Uncle Kawai Puna. Um, Uncle Kawai Puna was also one of the people who worked very, very closely, actually, you know, had the idea for the 1993 International Tribunal that put the U.S. on trial. and. Um, one of the things I thought was really beautiful about the way that um, Uncle Kikuni executed and the whole komike that, that brought the tribunal together was that they said, we're not just going to hold this, you know, this trial in Honolulu. We're going to take it to all of the different islands and not just, you know, one place on the islands, but to the aina where Kanaka are living, to Anahola, to um, Kahikinui, you know, to various places throughout the Pai Aina where the um, the jurists, the international panel of jurists who were convened, could see for themselves the conditions and the strengths of our people. Um, and then, of course, Uncle Walter, who has, you know, pretty much needs no <laughs> no introduction, who continues to be a warrior for Aloha Aina till this day um, in so many ways. My um, Moloka um, Inu Yahina. In 2016, we honored another. Kanaka Aloha Aina of Molokai, Auntie Judy Napoleon, who unfortunately, you know, we lost too early, but was critical in the um, Kaho'olawe movement as well. 
and um, look to as a leader on Moloka'i. And of course, Dr. Honanike Trask, who also was involved in the um, Protect Kaho Olave Ohana in the early 80s, um, but is much more well known for the work that she did um, subsequent to that in being the first um, director of the Center for Hawaiian Studies and who has you know, reminded us so strongly, we are not American, we are not American, we are not American. <laughs> die as Hawaiians. Um, oh yeah. Oh. Can you see? Yeah, I was thinking maybe we can show the website. the website. I looked at it really yeah. quickly. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So, um, so that was 2016. Um, in 2015, no, sorry, going back for 2017, we honored um, Uncle Imai Kalani Kalahele, who for many, many years ran the Ava ceremonies at um, Kalaho Iho Iea. He's an artist, um, really an amazing um, poet, musician, just, you know, Kanaka creative, a Renaissance uh, man in so many ways. Um, and was critical in hosting a lot of the um, meetings of the Hawaiian sovereignty movement uh, at the Queen Lili Uokalani uh, Children's Center, Branch Halona Street, where he worked for a long time. Um, and then another, you know, amazing Hawaiian Renaissance man, Uncle Palani Vaughn. Um, and you might jump in anytime you want to, you have lots of stories to share about all of these kupuna. Um, in 2018, we celebrated um, Auntie Moni Ke'ala Akaka, who had just passed, you know, she was um, known as an OHA trustee. She was involved with the Protect Kaho Olave Ohana in the early days, involved with many, many land struggles on Hawaii Island, all the way up until her arrest on Mauna Kea in 2015 when she was uh, 70. Um, unfortunately, she passed before she could see this round, the new round in 2019 of Mauna Kea uprisings. Um, and then we honored her along with Auntie Nani Rogers from Kauai and Malia, maybe you have awesome stories to share about Auntie Nani, but as, as I've known her, she's just always been one of those early Hawaiian independence uh, folks who has, um, you know, really um, created space on Kauai and networking beyond Kauai to um, put out in such a positive and loving way the stories of um, both our struggle and our um, and our strengths as as Kanaka. As yeah, kind of like what you said about uh, when you described Kikuni, you know, about being having this very and I think it's very a uh, very kupuna kind of a description. But you know, they're very like olu olu, and they have that very like nice approach. But you know what? they can be fierce <laughs> in the very same way and it's like kind of like telling you like i i get this with auntie nani all the time you know it's like come on come on you know it's like <laughs> i don't know that that amazing feeling that's like oh yeah oh if auntie nani can like i better be right there too yeah. because you know that's that's how she's making you feel and a lot of our kupuna i think i love i love it because if that's how they make us feel. And it's like, ah, uh, I'm at this age. I can do it. Where are you? You know, and so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So all, I mean, all of these kupuna, mm -hmm. you know, that we have tried to honor in the, over the years have that, you know, way of really kind of getting us to, um, to move when we need to move and have dedicated so many years of their lives, you know, um, so then last year um, in 2019, we honored um, the Wiley Kanak, Anakala Skipiyawane, and um, Uncle Puhi Pau, who is um, so well known for all of the work that he did uh, with Namaka Oka Aina in bringing the mo'olelo of land struggles of communities who are facing eviction, who are facing, you know, the digging up of Ivi, who are facing um, the desecration of Mauna Kea, you know, all of these stories um, have come to us on film um, because of the work that Anakala Puhipao and um, his partner, Joel Nander, have done. 
Um, and then Uncle Skippy Oane, I mean, just talk about like a prophet and poet, musician, um, someone who has walk the talk by occupying um, and creating community at King's Landing, um, who has been, you know, really a part of um, the Hawaii Island, the Moku Keabe movement for so many years that has made it um, that movement or a set of movements on Hawaii Island really in, in many ways kind of at, at the forefront, I think of, of what our lahu is, is about. So, you know, uh, we love that Uncle Skippy uh, agreed to be an honoree only if we would put his finger on the flyer. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Emai can explain because Uncle Skippy has a great way of explaining uh, what this means, that it, does, it doesn't just mean F you, right? Emai, do you? Yeah, it's nuanced, I guess. Uh, there's, a <laughs> bit of, there's a bit of a forthrightness to uh, the middle finger, but um you know Uncle, i've heard uncle skippy like mentioned a, a few different ways uh, the last way i heard which um you know i think is just kind of pointed for now is that you know um middle finger means you get one left that means you never give up yet um so uh, there's a lot of kauna behind the wild kanak and uh, if you listen to kahuna language um like okomaka and stuff like that then you can sort of pick up the kauna you know inside mm -hmm. of those things but um if you want to go if you want to hear what it's about you got to go to the source Nana Ike Kung. Mm. Yeah, truth tellers, yeah. He's a truth teller. Yeah. Um, so this year, because of the COVID-19 situation, you know, it's really made us think about how to double down on protecting our kupuna and honoring them. And because we can't gather in person in the ways that we normally would, um, we decided to bring all of them back and to say, you know, let's remind ourselves how precious our kupuna are that we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them that we wouldn't our movement wouldn't be where it is if not for them um and let's you know let's bring them all back and i love um so this art is uh done by this really talented amazing artist nikila badua who has been um creating the designs for the last seven years and i love that in the image that you see all of them together. It also kind of captures in some ways the experience that we've all had as a Lahui this last year. You know, we're, we're just coming up on a year since the um, kupuna arrests and the major uprisings on Mauna Kea where we really felt this like the wave, right? We were rising like this big wave as Antipua case talks about um, a mighty wave so when we, to me, when I see all of them together like this, it feels like that. It feels like this is that, you know, that mighty wave um, that has been carrying us and that we are all part of. That's really beautiful. I mean, I was going to ask that too, who's the artist? Because all of that artwork looks so amazing. And, um, and I liked also, I'm going to go back to that honorees page. I was just going to encourage our audience, like if you haven't looked around, you know, I see all these other additional links where you can even learn more about the honorees and, you know, um, it, it's, yeah, I think it's a great resource for so many people. Um, and we're, we have like about six or seven more minutes. So I was wondering, uh, maybe we can tell people about some of the activities that's going on and how they how they can get involved. Yeah, I'll I'll talk real briefly about the two strands that I'm involved with um, this year, and then I'll let Imai finish up with all of the things that he's working on. Um, so we, um, I don't know. If I won't try to share my screen. I'll just direct people. You can check out the La Hoi Hoi Ea Facebook page. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we have a YouTube channel now. Um, so the first um, thing is every Monday, uh, we're running panels that would normally be part of the Hoi Ke Ea um, Education Conference. And you know this was an idea that originally was birthed um, from Imai and other fellow educators like Anuhea Awo Chan, Mahina Paishan Duart, um, and Trevor Atkins are part of the original crew that, that were organizing um, Hoi Ke'ea. 
there's a few of us who are who have jumped on this year to help with uh, making it all happen. But every Monday, 10 o'clock, um, in that thread, we're taking on um, kind of three of the major issues that are going on right now, Black Lives Matter, COVID-19, and Mauna Kea. So um, the first panel was Black and Kanaka youth talking about how to create solidarity and relationships between our movements. This coming Monday, it's going to be teachers who made the, the travel up to Mauna Kea last year and who have worked to incorporate teaching Mauna Kea into their curricula. The following week, we're going to have parents talking about what it means to be educators at home in this time of COVID-19. Um, and then the final week will be kind of a, a wrap up and a return to the 10 point plan that have, has come out of the Ho'ike'ea series in the past few years. Um, and then the other piece that I'm involved with is the Nahua Ea thread. And Nahua Ea usually every year for the last six years has been um, a spoken word and mele event, really intimate at um, hosted by Papa Hanakuaola over there in Waipao in, in their big hale. Um, and it's always a wonderful event of sharing food, sharing poetry, um, sharing updates about what's happening in the community, especially on that Ko'olau side. Um, but this year, because of the uh, COVID situation, we're doing it all online. So we've had two poetry workshops. Normally we have poetry workshops that lead up to the performance. So people can kind of experiment. And um, it's not like a slam where there's, people are being judged. It's very much like, is this the first time you ever wrote a poem? Awesome, we wanna hear your voice. Is this the 50th time? Is this the 200th time? We wanna hear your voice. So, um, Emilani Case, which, you know, did our first one. Malia, you got to participate in that. That was so much fun. And then Nau Revilla is going to do our next workshop. And then the um, performance is going to be uh, on July 19th. Um, that same day, Hanalei Bishop and Homestead Poi is also going to be hosting a work day out in Waiahole so we can get um, inspired by playing music and, you know, tending the aina. And then he's also going to be hosting a huli giveaway at Kavaivai the following weekend um, on Saturday morning. So then I'll pass it to Imai for all the other stuff he's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, all of uh, Noi. Uh, we're, we're kind of like uh, dividing duties this year. It's really been uh, helpful for me um, to kind of spread the ability around Lucky. I just so happen to be. Uh, lucky enough to be with Noi, who handles quite a bit, so mahalo. Um, the two threads that I'm kind of working on, in addition to a couple other threads, um, kind of revolve around these two things that we've, uh, these two programs we've been trying to develop. Uh, the first one is Aha Mele Ea, uh, which is essentially just a Hawaiian independence concert um, that we've been running with a couple of our good friends, uh, Nad, uh, Navid Najafi, um, Ill Nomadic for us, uh, listen to the local hip hop scene, um, as well as a good friend, uh, Lilo Dunn, um, or uh, the Lethal Selector, uh, for those of you guys who listen to reggae. Um, and so this kind of compilation has brought a lot of resistance music, resistance sort of education and um, that sort of consciousness, um, and brought La Hoi Hoi Ea to new crowds that typically maybe wouldn't find on a Sunday in Thomas Square. Um, so it was a way to bring uh, La Hoi Hoi Ea into the communities as diverse as they were. Um, plus, I just like reggae and hip hop. Um, <laughs> the other film case, uh, the, the other program that we're working on, we're pretty excited about. Uh, we're working with uh, Native Hawaiian filmmakers, um, specifically Kaliko Ma'i and Aina Paikai for the last several years. And uh, we're working on a program called Ho Ea, um, taken from Ea, which is uh, the arrival, you know, the um, the arrival of new voices, not Kanaka native voices, trying to use um, different mediums of Mo'olelo to really share our stories. Um, we're trying to envision like a, not a HIF Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii International, but a Hawaiian Independence Film Festival. Um, and, and so those are ways that I think um, help to really elevate and amplify some of the, some of the, um, the stories that, 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 that are going and are being made currently um, in, in Hawaii today by a lot of young and uh, up and coming um, filmmakers. Um, some of the other discussions that we have, because Thomas Square typically has, um, you know, community updates, kuka tents and speakers, um, but because we weren't able to do that all, um, we will be having a, um, on July 21st, um, oh, sorry, Aha Mele Ea, uh, for you guys who want to join into our concert, it'll be live July 25th. Uh, we're working with um, Sean Pimentel folks, so it'll be kind of a, a fancy 
uh, put together, mm-hmm. I believe. So check it out. Um, Ho'el is going to take place on July 26th, the following, um, the next Sunday, um, the next day, sorry, um, on a Sunday uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. So I hope you guys can check it out. Um, otherwise, we've got a couple of interesting cultural as well as educational things going on. Um, they're all on our website. Um, and again, our Facebook is kind of like the update place. So things are kind of organic, just like the sea rises and falls. So too does our schedule. Um, but look out, look out for Ao Mai Kikai Mai, which is a discussion on RIMPAC, uh, led by um, Kao Kajihiro. Um, look for Oki'i Kamua, which is a presentation by Andre Perez and Hui Kalai Ki'o Kupa Ika. Look for uh, Malo Monologues, uh, which is a discussion for men um, about Malo. Um, and lastly, on the 31st, which is the day Friday, um, we're going to be putting a call out. Uh, maybe shortly, we'll be holding space um, at Thomas Square to do a flag ceremony as well as some cer- uh, some Ava ceremony as well. So for those of you guys who want to celebrate, um, we know people will be going through. Um, so we'll be holding space over there too on the 31st. Cool. Awesome. I, and I'm, I'm trying to be real Eleo on my end and I wanted to bring up the Facebook page just to show everybody. Because um, I was going to ask because I see a post on here and as I bring it up about the... Um, t-shirt so is that something you guys are selling or if people wanted to kako'o in a certain way i see it see that on your facebook page now yeah every year the t-shirts are pretty much the only source of um, income that we have to provide all of this free education so um, all the events throughout the month are free and open to the public um, the t-shirts are, are the way that we kind of fund that and um so this year we're working with warrior printing mahalo to caleb um for helping us to get shirts together that we will try to figure out how to um deliver and um you know in a socially distanced way because we won't be having the big sunday event normally each year um la hoi hoi ea honolulu um, organizes the thomas square event on the last sunday of july every year for since 1986 um but because we can't have that this year, there is going to be a um, small ceremony, I think, there. You might could say more about that if he wants. But um, we are going to try to have the T-shirts available in some way. So um, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you want to just purchase from your home and have it mailed directly to you, we've been using this company, Teespring, that prints on demand. So um, unfortunately, it's not a Kanaka-owned business. But the proceeds, 100% go to um, the, the free public programming and education around La Ho'i Ho'i'ea. And as Imai mentioned, like the vast majority of the people who do this work, you know, Aiko Yamashiro on Na Ea, Mehana Hind does our emceeing for Na Ea every year, Naveed, um, Najafi, Lilo Adan, all these people do this work completely for free. So... Mm. Um, there's all of that that's donated in as well, but sometimes we have, um, you know, things like holy giveaway or food giveaway or things like that that you know just require a little bit of funds. So all of those funds go into um, providing that education. Also, want to say real quickly, uh, I know we're running on time, but um, uh, we've also been very blessed to see this explosion of uh, celebrations around Pai Aina as well as the world. I know guys out in New York, Chris Kato folks have been celebrating Kala Hoi Hoi. Chris, if you guys are watching this, oh, Kako, uh, don't stop. Um, and people on Maui, um, communities on Hawaii Island, I know and, uh, our, uh, our good friends out in Pa'oilo um, have been doing it for a number of years now. You know, Maui um, is also hosting La Hoi Hoi uh, celebrations, Hawaii Island. I know they have caravans and they do a lot of things around the, the, uh, the federal parks, I believe. So um, we're really seeing this, this surge, you know, um, of consciousness and this reclamation of, of our identity, of our humanity, this decolonial process, the deoccupational process has been very, um, uh, very uplifting, I think, so in our communities. And I think the education, I think, is what is really sparking people to action. And, and for me, I'm, I very much believe in, you know, theory got to be met with action. You know, we, we need to reflect and correct our history, correct our consciousness, but it's only to create new and more positive action, you know? Um, and so for those of us who are in, you know, that, that educational, trying to unlearn all this colonization, that's what we're doing too. Um, but we got to match that, that, that theory with, with action, you know? So 
um, Nahoe Hoe and all the guys who join us from all the different communities, you know, you know, like I think those are good examples of what's going on. So I think um, maybe to wrap it up, I was just wondering um, if people wanted to get involved besides being participants in the events, um, are you guys looking for any kokua or volunteers? I, I know there's a whole variety of stuff, but I'm just wondering if people want to get into action or want to do something with their ohana, maybe it's hosting a watch party or of some sort, or I don't know if you guys have any ideas of ways that people can kokua and just step up for action. Yeah, um, that's a great question, Malia. Mahalo for asking that. Um, uh, this year, because, uh, well, we want to make it global, you know, so what we're trying to put a call out for the 31st is we want to do a whole new uh, flag raising ceremony and everybody call for um, justice for Ho'i Ho'i Ea at the same time, you know. Um, the AHA at the Mauna has shown us the power of accessible ceremony, of accessible, you know, like um, spaces where people can engage in that type of, uh, that type of mana building. Um, so part of the things that people can do, aside from like, well, participate, definitely you can contact us on Facebook. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not a Facebook guy for those of you who actually know me. Um, but uh, there's ways that you can reach out to us. And every year we try to go through a Rolodex of people who we've helped, who, who've helped us in the past. And, you know, so if you're inspired by some of the things that you um, are, uh, have seen or experienced, um, go to your community and go start something. Mm. You know, if you don't know how, contact us and we'll work with you, you know, for a while. And, you know, ideally, like all of these partnerships that we have are meant to kind of act independently, you know, like we're just trying to start the fire right now. But uh, the emu is meant for each family, you know, to, to separate right now. So I um, also want to mention uh, Mana Ai, Daniel Anthony, who's always been a big provi uh, big supporter of Kalaho Iho Ea when a lot, a lot of guys were. Um, and there's a lot of people in the past that I cannot, you know, kind of really all mention right now that have, have done a lot in our mo'oko on getting us to where we're at right now. So um, all the people that we, we weren't able to mention, um, we haven't forgotten you guys. Yeah, watch parties would be great. Um... La Ho'i Ho'i Ea um, is on, like I said, our so on social, all the social media platforms. And then you can also email la Ho'i Ho'i Ea at gmail.com if you just want to reach out and um, talk to us. In fact, we got um, a message on, on Instagram from uh, some Kanaka who are making face masks that they wanted to do a partnership. So they're going to sell their face masks and we're going to um, help distribute some as well. So yeah, we're always excited to partner with, with folks who are doing stuff to raise consciousness too. Yep. And if you're doing good Lahui work um, and you want to come party with us, then uh, come and contact us. I think, uh, you know, together we are stronger. You know, that's where our power lies is, is our cohesiveness, our collectivity. Um, so let's unite, you know, let's, let's make this, uh, you know, let's rise together. Yeah, awesome. Mahalo Nui. Um, I see a lot of excitement on the Facebook page. You know, people are saying all in. They're <laughs> wanting a t-shirt, so they want, they want one now, so they're going to go check it out. And yeah, we encourage everybody to really connect with um, the La Ho'i Ho'i Ea team. Um, go to their website, their Facebook, Instagram, and yeah, plan plan ways that you can rise up as, as an individual, but as a ohana and as a community. I think that's where we find that collective consciousness, like you've said, we, we grow together and we rise up together. I think that's, that's some really, um, I, I'm glancing over to, to Facebook because I see it moving a lot over here on, on my phone. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good um, comments going on there. You guys might want to go check out uh, the Kanayo Kana yeah. Facebook page. I see a lot of comments coming up. Um, yeah, fly, fly your high Hawaii, you know, post photos. It was so awesome. a caravan, guys. I want to see a yeah. caravan on the 31st. Come buzz by Thomas Square. We'll be there at noon. All month, all month long. It was awesome, you know, right as things were happening last year around Mauna Kea to see everyone with their Hawaiian flags on their trucks and their cars at home and so... Um, yeah, we hope to see that this month. Yeah, put your flag up and don't ever take it down. That's what we're going <laughs> to <Yeah>. do today. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to bring up some closing slides. And if you have any, like, last mana'o, you can say it while I bring up these slides. If anything. Just really mahalo you for all the work that you're doing to bring voices um, together. 
I must say this, uh, this day was made famous because of Ua Mau Ke'e Okaene Kopono, but our generation, we try to adopt um, the continued work that it needs to take. Um, so E Mau Ke'e Okaene Kopono makes it active, makes it kuleana for us, makes us accountable to our ea. Um, so as we say that, at least for our organizing hui, E Mau Ke'e Okaene Kopono, um, the kuleana is ours. So is the ea. Ay, mahalo. Um, I, I kind of want to just end there because that's just so amazing <laughs> and very inspirational. And um, But, you know, here's some closing slides as we normally do. Um, please go and help us complete our um, survey. Let us know what you thought about today's um, episode, uh, what you learned. It takes a few minutes to complete this questionnaire. Um, and if you want to stay connected with us and you have ideas about other future programming, this is a good space to share that in. Um, you know, like one of the questions I've also been thinking about, and if you want to throw some ideas in the comments as well on Facebook um, or on Zoom, um, you know, like for Hinaya LLA right now during this Malama, and because things are continuing to change, we went to doing one show a week. And I'm trying to figure out, like, for next, this next Malama, as we're approaching it, should we stay with the one a week? And Because there's so many going on, um, so much things going on in our community. And so we really just want to be able to support the needs of our community and our um, families and needs there. Uh, you know, back in March when we got started, we were doing, like, five a week because... There was that really big need and gap. And so, yeah, let me know what you think um, and how we can better serve you guys. Um, and if you like programming, if we need to ramp it up again, we would love to hear from everybody um, and let us know. Uh, so, yeah, like as I just said, you know, um, right now we're just doing Fridays at 9 a.m. like today. And then I, I call it that uh, Olelo Hawaii show that's... Um, hosted by Ekalakani LP O'Crozier. They are doing a show today at 12. So we invite all of you to come back. And uh, earlier on Wednesday is when they had Baba and Kalehuama. Um, and then today is the Kahakalau Ohana. Um, so Sister Roby as well as Ku. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great mo'olelo there shared with Ike, um, Ekela and a lot of kole kole and I, I ono that's going to be shared. So we invite you to come back, check that out. If you want to um, see what our schedule is, go to kanayokana, oops, kanayokana.net slash lay. Um, and let's see. So as we shared earlier, go follow and like um, the La Hoi Hoi Ea Facebook as well as their Instagram, and then stay connected with us, whether it's Kanayo Kana or Hawaii Nui Akea, come and like or follow us so that you can get the most updated information about our work. So again, mahalo nui to all of our partners who continue to help us um, cross post and bring all of this amazing content into your homes, into your communities. And we continue to um, look forward to more exciting things. And like we ended earlier, um, Aloha. <laughs>